Hello everyone, you may have noticed that when you are farming metal in Ark Survival Ascended, either by hand or with an Anki, you aren't getting as much metal out of a metal node as Ark Survival Evolved. There is a reason for this, it's because they've changed the way these nodes work, and I've cracked the code with an Anki. Yes, the answer is more melee, but how much do you need? Well, meet my three greatest enemies, left, right, and center. I sat here and smashed these guys every time they respond for half of my Wednesday to find out how to get the most metal out of them. First, I wanted to see what exactly was affecting the amount of metal gain, and then I wanted to maximize it. So I started with my control Anki, and logged everything that I thought might affect metal gain, such as melee stat, percent melee damage, actual damage, and then damage buffs. The numbers recorded that you see here are how much metal I got out of the rock, and I tested each rock 10 times. The bolted boxes at the bottom are the average of each rock, and the bolted box on the right is the average of the entire set. Then, I moved on to my next Enki, which had more points in melee, more melee percent, and more total damage because of them. He got 60 metal rock on average. Then, on to the next Enki, which has less melee percent, way less levels in melee, but it was 100% fully imprinted to me. Defug. If you didn't know, imprinting buffs the melee percent and not the melee levels, so that's why I was making that distinction earlier. And imprinting also gives a 30% multiplicative damage buff if you're the rider. So that put my damage slightly higher than the previous Anki at 225. The result from this Anki was 67 metal on average, so this is where I learned it's all about the damage, baby. So what I did was add a mate boost, which is another 33% multiplicative damage buff, and this skyrocketed my damage to 300. And in tandem, skyrocketed my average metal gain to 90. So here I'm seeing visions of metal ingots and YouTube views raining down on me as I spun in my level 3000 giga Anki to see this massive metal gain. First I tested its damage, oh shit. Then I walked him up to my mortal enemies and unleashed his wrath upon their strong, rock hard bodies. And then this is what I see. What? Straight fucking disappointment. Did I really just spend hours of my afternoon hitting rocks for nothing? But the whole reason I started this test was because on my first day this game came out, I was just trying things out and I remembered getting about 250 metal out of a node with a high level Anki. So I took my powerful friend and flew him to the best metal spawn on the island and unleashed my disappointment onto it. And what I found reinvigorated me. Some rocks gave me about 100 metal on average, which is what I got hitting left, right, and center with my Giga Anki, and some gave me closer to 250, which is what I remembered from before. Did you know there was two different kinds of metal nodes in this game, like there was in Survival Evolved? I didn't. I still see no visual difference. It does seem like the better node is a bit bigger on average, but sometimes a big rock will only give me 100 metal, so I don't really know. Regardless, the fact is that some metal nodes give 100 metal on average max, and then others will give 270 metal on average max. I found that out by hitting a bunch of metal nodes with Giga Anki, and averaging out only the good metal nodes, and I know this is the max because the pattern that I have established here, between damage and metal gain, does not follow with my 1921 damage Giga Anki. So what's the pattern here? I wanted to find the minimum damage Anki that I need to get 100 metal out of the shitty metal nodes and how much more damage I need to get 270 out of the good ones, assuming that the pattern stays the same. Hint, it, it does. I had to look up videos on pattern recognition on YouTube to get a hint, so here's your chance to pause and leave the answer in the comments and prove you're smarter than me. Okay, so it's actually really simple. The average metal gain is just 30% of the raw damage of the Anki. I tested this by making a 613 damage Anki and farming the good metal nodes, and the rule followed. I got an average of 181 metal out of the good metal nodes. My 335 damage Anki gets me 99 metal on average out of every metal node, and my 904 damage Anki gets me 268 metal on average. So again, the rule is, your Anki's metal collection is 30% of its raw damage. You can just hit a training dummy with your Anki and multiply it by 0.3, and that's what you're gonna get out of a metal rock on average. Just some metal nodes are shitty and will max you out at 100 average, and some are good and won't max out till 270 metal average. Also, okay, so Doth from the future here. I was gonna say in this that upcoming clip that every rock dies in one swing, but then I saw in that exact clip that I was not breaking rocks in one swing. So I did some testing and these small rocks, like uh, left, right, and center here, the shitty ones, they have like 100-ish health, and then the good ones have like 250, I assume 270-ish health. 
and it doesn't matter. You still want to overcap on the damage because I'll show you here. This Anki does 95 damage. And so this is not going to break him in one hit, but it doesn't matter because I don't get any more metal out of the second swing. Sometimes I'll get like one or two more. So you're only getting more metal out of like their health if you're overcapping on the very first swing. So how do we get that 900 damage to maximize our metal runs? Your tools to increase your damage are your melee percent, imprint buff, and mating boost. With mating boost and a max imprint buff, you need 1042% melee damage to achieve 900 raw damage. I spawned in a bunch of perfect tame Ankies, picked the best one with a 45 melee stat, bred it, 100% imprinted it, and fully leveled it and got to 1036% melee, so it's definitely achievable with some luck and a lot of levels. Then you have to decide if having mate boost is worth it for your metal runs. This is because having mate boost on a metal run is going to be a pain, since you'll have to use a slow moving Quetzal to place a opposite sex Anki on the platform while you're carrying your farming Anki. I would much rather use the fast and mobile Rhino Natha to farm metal, which means you would need four tribe mates to go on a metal run with two Rhino and two opposite sex Ankies and stay pretty close to each other. Mate boost rankies is about 11 foundations, so this isn't a terrible option, and you could farm pretty dang fast, but it requires a lot of coordination and manpower. Ideally, you would want a Anki that can do 900 damage with just a max imprint buff and no mate boost. This would take 1385% melee damage on your Anki, and that will definitely require quite a few mutations. Okay, so assuming you got your 900 damage Anki, where are these good metal nodes to make use of it at? They are basically in all the places that the solid gold rocks were in Ark Survival Evolved. They're very common on the tops of mountains and are rare around other metal spawns. The best farming metal mountain is the mountain east of Volcano, and the rest of the mountains around that one are all pretty mid. You might just want to look up videos of metal spawns on the island because you really just need to take what you can get here. I don't know how much melee damage matters on other farming tames. I tested it on an angler, and an angler with 3000% melee damage only seemed to get about 5-10 to 10 silica pearls more on average than an angler with 350% melee damage. Okay, that's all I have for you on this, so be sure to subscribe so you're the first to know important stuff like this, comment especially if you have questions or found something different than me, and like the video if it helped you out. May the RNG gods bless your Anki mutations. See ya.